digital romance TV. Hey folks, Michael Fiore, Digital Romance TV. Nora Blake, also Digital Romance TV. Hi. We're here to answer your questions about your love questions. and relationships. Today's I feel like I'm on Dragnet. <laughs> Are we Molly and Scolder? Scully and Mulder? <laughs> I want to be Scolder from now on. There you go. I'm going to be Molly. Dangle angle pants. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Um, today's topic is five things to discuss before marriage. Oh my god. Okay, wow. Five things to discuss before marriage. Do you want kids? Yep. I would say that's a very, very important thing. Oh, that's huge. I think before you're even like discussing the idea of a future together, that's a big conversation. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big one. I've known uh, people who've wasted years in relationships because they knew from the beginning and they still like continued and thought maybe somebody would change and Yeah. That that's no not matter gonna, that's how much not gonna you work. love somebody. Mm -hmm they're not probably going to change their mind about that one. No, it's actually, it's the biggest one, yeah. I would say. Um, two would actually be, what happens if it doesn't work out? Yep. And that sounds so freaking unromantic, doesn't it? No, yeah. Um, I've written articles before this, uh, before about this, but I am a very much pro-prenup. Absolutely. Uh, in general. And a lot of, particularly women, would say, oh, Mike, you're being so unromantic. You're basically predicting the divorce before it ever happens yep. and blah, blah, blah. But uh, we live in reality. Living on the other side of it and mm -hmm. having been through it and having taken so long to get our ducks in order after because we had no plan for what child care together might look like without our marriage in place and all of these things, I would say if you're going to do a prenup, do it all the way. Like if you plan on having children together, plan for the eventual like what if we have to co-parent my, my prenup has that stuff in yeah. there? So, yeah. Um, I, I was not, I was one of those 20-somethings who was like, oh, no, nah, shucks, that's like, We're going to last forever. We're going to be together forever. Why would we bother getting married if we're not going to be together forever? But I would say, like, it doesn't always work out. Forever is a very long time. It is. We live a long time now. We do. We don't, we, you know, we're getting to the point where the average life expectancy will eventually get to like 90-ish or so. Um, and being with somebody for 70 years or 50 years or 80 years is a very long time. And just because a relationship doesn't last 80 years doesn't mean it's a failure. Right. I know many people have been married for 20 or 30 years and then ended it and they're friends and it's good and usually they had a prenup <laughs> because they didn't then have to... Then you don't have to worry about all of the... the and that's... Yeah. That it creates so much. When you're in a place of emotional disruption in your life and then you're trying to be lo logical and not come from a place of hatred and anger towards somebody else that you've just spent all this time with and you have all these natural feelings about the ending of your relationship yep. and then trying to you know plan for the future of your children that's supposed to last forever like yeah, that kind of much, thing it's just much, too much too pressure much. to put on people so yep. i would totally agree a prenup so uh three though we need a third one a third one i would say um it was actually five well, we're doing, we're doing, we're on number three. Oh, we are, uh, yes. Number yeah, three. number three for me, I just forgot what I was going to say. Um, division of labor, mm -hmm. in a way. Because it changes, you know, a marriage changes a relationship in a very fundamental way. And I find, I would say division of labor and expectations. Yep. Because what I've discovered a lot is that, from talking to many, many men and women, is that especially for women, once you get engaged, the expectations of who your partner is and what they're going to do change radically, right? And a lot of guys are like, I asked you to marry me because I liked the way things were. Right. And now they're totally different. And now I feel like you've hooked me and therefore you're expecting something different from me. Yeah, I don't think it's anything that women do are doing on purpose. No. I think it's just that in their mind they go engaged and they go Prince Charming and the Ken and Barbie doll from when I was a kid. Right. And you've got to be perfect now. Right. And I think it's very important for a couple to sit down and just be like, who do you need me to be to be happy? Right. And you need to be able to say, is that a person I'm capable of being or not? Right. Because right? in marriages, you run into this all the time where people are just like, well, that guy or that girl you want, I was never that person. And I'm never right. going to be. And I can't actually do it from there. Uh, number four, we need two more. What else we got? What are the important things to talk about? Uh, Religion. Yeah. Religion, I, mean, I if think, that's, is a big thing. Yeah, neither one of us is. Religious. Um, but, but if you are, mm -hmm. uh, being able to come to, especially if you're going to raise children together, uh, a place where you understand how you both feel and where you feel that you want to raise your children in terms of how your beliefs yep. is very important. Or if just religion is going to be a big part of your life right. at all. If it is and your partner, you. and it's not for your partner, then that's a huge thing. 
Right? Yeah. If, if going to church every Sunday and having that be a big part of your life is important and your partner... Especially like, if you want your partner to go with you. Right. You, should, you should make that known before you get too deeply into yep. it. And I would probably group in like culture stuff as well with that. Like how involved is your family going to be in your life? Mm -hmm. All that kind of thing. And uh, the fifth one I had in my brain a second ago and then I lost it. Darn it, what was it? Um, I had the cure for cancer and I lost it. <laughs> oh, deal breakers. Yeah. Deal breakers. Yeah. Um, Every relationship has things, everybody has things that they will not put up with yep. that are just too much. Many people will immediately say, cheating is the number one thing. And they're usually wrong because cheating is not necessarily a death knell for a relationship. Um, you know, if you, if you pledge to have a monogamous relationship, you should, do your, you should do that, but things happen. But I think it's very valuable for a couple to sit down and just sit down and, and say, here's the things that you should know are not on my, on my list of things that I cannot tolerate in a partner whatever they might be. And your partner needs to look at those and say, can I try to hit that or not? Right. Because nobody can be perfect. Nobody's ever going to be perfect. And it shouldn't be like, no fatties is the only thing on the list or whatever else it's going to be. But you just need to know from an ethical standpoint, from a you know, activity standpoint, what do you need? I would also say it makes sense for a couple to sit down and really think about what is your average day as a married couple look like? Sure. Like, you know, what, I mean, what is, because again, this happens all the time where people are like, well, I want to spend more time with you. And the other person's like, we spend plenty of time together. And they're just on such different wavelengths as far as what time is and what quality time is and right. like how to spend any given day. Yep. So that's kind of your sixth bonus one, bonus ones. Um, she's been married. I am married. These are things I wish I had talked about more. I so, totally agree with all of them. There you go. And we're done because Ben went, whoop, 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 whoop. that's the end of it. Uh, if you agree or if you have other things that, actually, I would love Add to, them to the list. I would love to hear what you wish you had talked about before you got married. Yeah, especially married, yeah, people who are married, married have been married. Mm -hmm. Yep. And put that down there. And then go over to digitalromanceinc.com and uh, sign up for our newsletter. Check out all the articles. Become part of our community because we love you. Bye. If you've got a cell phone in your pocket or purse right now, then you've got everything you need to create incredible romance and passion with the man or woman in your life at the push of a button. Go to digitalromance.tv forward slash TRB to see Michael Fiore make an entire audience of women on The Rachel Ray Show swoon and learn how to use tiny little text messages to have the relationship of your dreams.